these are strange times these are uncertain times these are indeed stressful times but these are also innovative times a time to wear our thinking caps even tighter and come up with effective technology solutions which can show us the way into the future innovations like the one that we are using today to hold a virtual conference with such ease hello and welcome to today's session on effectiveness of legal tech in managing legal risks in the post covid world now legal tech in itself has existed for well over a decade an explosions compliance management solution comris for example was launched way back in 2010 however the need for technology solutions to assist in house legal teams has perhaps not been felt more acutely than in the past 6 months uh, today we'll speak to four stalwarts of the legal industry and seek their views on how legal tech has helped them navigate through this current period Uh, with this, I'd like to introduce the four panelists. We have with us uh, Ms. Rekha Surendran, uh, Vice President and Company Secretary with Carborand, the Universal Limited, which is a part of the Murugappa Group. Uh, she has over two decades of experience and is joining us today from Chennai. Uh, we are joined also by Mr. T. A. Baskaran, Head of Tax and Legal for Hanon Automotive, Automotive India. Mr. Baskaran has over three decades of rich experience, having previously worked with the Murugappa Group, PwC, and the. Uh, Mr. Baskaran also is based out of Chennai. Uh, I would also like to introduce uh, Mr. Anirban Debre, General Counsel of Builder Soft Limited, a part of the CK Builder Group. Uh, having graduated from Calcutta University and King's College London, Anirban has 20 years of diverse experience in legal operations, having worked at Vodafone, Gabriel India, and Nico, among others. Uh, Anirban joins us from Mumbai, and then we have Mr. Nitin Sharma, uh, who leads the legal team of Beckton Dickinson for South Asia and India. Uh, Nitin has over a decade of experience, having spent the initial years in the law firms of J. Sagar and A. Z. B. before taking on in-house counsel roles in Davita Care and now in Beckton Dickinson. And I'm Indranil Chaudhary, uh, the CEO of Explosion. I'm also a lawyer with about two and a half decades of experience. Uh, thank you all for joining us today for what I'm sure will be an enriching session for everyone who has logged in. Uh, let me start by asking the speakers on their perception of legal tech and what value it has brought to their lives. Uh, Rick, Rekha, if I may start by asking you, which are the areas of an in-house counsel's work that technology can really bring about change in, and what has been your experience of adopting legal tech? Good afternoon to all. In general, just as we spoke when we got ourselves introduced in our journey together, Kumi has been one of the pioneers in introducing legal technology. Uh, they are ahead of its times. In fact. we've had legal technology adopted in our company close to a decade back and uh, to, to me if you personally ask me i would say it cannot replace the human value that is brought into the entire uh, perspective but it will definitely support us especially we've seen the use during these covid times where with uh, a limited resources we are able to monitor and compliance and you know, Uh, ensure that everything is working perfectly so that's how i would view it that's a very interesting perspective and uh, you have uh, you have of course uh, rightly brought in the fact that the last 6 months have uh, brought in a completely new aspect to uh, technology and how all of us are you know currently connected with each other uh, even if you uh, you know a year back if we had a conference we would request everybody to fly down to one city it was unbelievable that we could all still connect and talk and have a perfectly decent session uh, did this uh, sitting in four or five different cities but it's being made possible through technology so absolutely i take your point uh, if i can move to you ms baskar and again uh, uh, you've been involved with the legal tech space you've been exploring different technologies for a long time what are the roadblocks what are the internal challenges that you faced when you tried to introduce uh, legal tech in hanon systems what are the kind of uh, challenges you faced good afternoon to all in fact uh, we were all that while using different process of ensuring compliances because we have the pan india presence multiple statutes and uh, changing people and thousands of compliances so uh, initially we had a uh, little challenges and difficult times as well what we did we have taken it to uh, taken it taken it with the top management and shared what exactly the downsides we have if we don't have a robust system in place so 
today non compliances cost a much it involves a huge penalty on the board of directors and it would lead to the extent of prosecution etc as well so we had carried this message to the top level of the management and being the mnc company we have taken it to our headquarters as well and we took this as a very very serious and focused task to implement this so we have spread this across first and made people to prepare themselves and to accept this and gear up themselves for the transformation from their present mode to the digitec legal compliance mode though there was a resistance in the initial stages people realized once we made a very focused attempt on this on mapping the task and fixing the user reviewer and escalation level kind of thing in that process people realized the importance of this digital way of driving their compliances in the changing environment and it was accepted now we are moving to the next level of even based compliances and any expansion plans what are all the things to be done kind of a thing so we are just moved to the next level so initially we had some level of resistance but people as a team and we formed a cft cross functional team and task force as well which was welcomed after that and we are in a robust implementation now thank you thank you very much uh, uh, let me move to anil ban who uh, interestingly this is the second uh, uh, company where anil ban and we are interacting uh, so you've been involved in the decision making process uh, in choosing legal technology uh, first uh, i know in vodafone and now in, in the ck billa group uh, in billa soft uh, what goes into the decision making process what is a in house counsel a leader of a, a large organization's legal team what are you thinking about what are the pros and cons that you are balancing when you are coming to that decision on which particular product to choose which particular aspects of legal in house legal work to bring in technological intervention in what are those decision making processes what is what is going through your mind i'm sure that will that will benefit many of the people who have logged into today's session yeah certainly andranil uh, these are very important questions because we we have to ask ourselves these questions before you ultimately go ahead and select a tool which are which there are many of them in the market so so ultimately it boils down to what are the analytical capabilities of those tool and what data point would it throw back to the management because uh, as it happens in the present company and in the previous many organizations i had worked in uh, uh, the critical litigations do get placed before uh, the audit committees and before the senior senior management so there is a need for positive assurance in terms of the fact that these we firstly that we have visibility of those litigations secondly we know where the litigations stand and to a great extent we also need to have some audit trail of what really transpired two years back about a litigation as you know in india litigations does go on for a good number of years and that brings in the need for if i may say finding a solution at the click of a mouse and that's the journey i think that's an irreversible journey all of us had gone into and these are the points which which really if i may uh, tell trouble us in a sense that how do i know whether geographically sparsed uh, distributed litigations so where where do i have a single point visibility and that visibility requirement for that vis visibility brings in the need for such a tool and coming back to the um, benefits from the tool and the features of that tool are one of the parameters prime parameters which we as in house lawyers need to decide because beyond the point management cannot take a decision without the help of in house lawyers which of these tools are best suited from the lawyers perspective so that, that is where we as in house lawyers have a huge contribution to play whether in the in the decision on whether the right tool is being chosen in terms of the bringing the value bringing in terms of the right price point and also bringing all the features which in terms of intelligence that organization is looking for thank you thank you alivan i think that's that's a that's a very valuable input and with that i'd like to move to nitin uh, nitin again uh, you and i have uh, experienced legal tech technology uh, across the table in first in davita and now again in beckton dickinson uh, 
what are the benefits? What, what are you looking for when, when you, and, and I know we have had long, you know, detailed conversations about functionalities, features. What are the benefits that you're looking for and that you're drawing out of the, uh, out of the technological solutions that are currently being implemented in, in, in BD, for example? Thanks, Indranil. Um, I think we do use uh, the the contract management tools of yours, and that's been that's been very very helpful. Let me begin by saying that one important aspect that I would want to cover is that um, historically, if you've seen whether it was the 1987 market crash or whether it was a dot com bubble or even a subprime, these were crises of a different nature. Uh, and COVID is very different as well. And the big point of difference is that the technology was in a very different phase when these crises happened. Um, at the time when COVID happened, technology was far more mature. And that's where your organization and many others were also in a very good position to really capture on that uh, situation. And what's, what this has done is, at least for me, uh, is that the discussion around a good technology has moved away from the corner office to my office. Where, you know, where I now, when I say, hey, listen, if I do not get technology, I may not be able to serve you. And if a legal counsel is not able to serve the organization, the risk matrix becomes much higher. Both commercial, legal, financial, reputational, the list is long. To answer your question around uh, what do I look at, for me, efficiency is the biggest tool because there is only much 24 hours available in a day and probably in, uh, even if you stretch beyond, uh, like a law firm, you still probably go for 16, 18 hours in a day, but you really have to make them count. So it's not about how many hours are you putting in work, it's, about, it's, it's all about how much efficiency are you bringing in within those number of hours. And a platform, whether it's a contract management, whether it's a risk assessment, whether it's a diligence platform, whether it's a repository, it has to work on that basis. And again, efficiencies always come at a cost. And the cost is not always a human, sort of a human headcount head that we're not talking about. There are different ways in which you look, look at a technology, right? I can say, hey, now I have a platform, so I can actually, I don't need three people. Or I can say, listen, I have a technology, but I need these three people to do more because I have a technology supporting them. So it's just the way you want to look at and just the way you want to really trace that. And again, uh, to summarize what I would say, three things, efficiency, cost factor, and my time to resolve business issues becomes much, much shorter. And, um, and you know, my contribution then becomes like more of a business player rather than only a lawyer in the organization. Thank you. And, and I think uh, all four of you have brought out four completely different aspects. And as somebody who has now been involved in this legal technology uh, space almost by accident for over a decade, uh, what I've noticed is how the, the need for technology and the demands out of technology have changed over the last decade. From uh, us having to spend endless hours driving the need, I think all especially organizations of your scale and size have moved away from uh, way up the need hierarchy to that self-actualization phase where you are no longer looking at uh, the basics. The basics are a given now. So you are looking for efficiency. There were times when I remember way back in the 2007, 8, 9 time frame when we would ask questions like, won't that lead to people losing jobs? It was almost like the days when the computers were first introduced, where the legal team actually worried that their colleagues will lose their jobs because, because a technology solution was being brought in. But that's clearly not happened. Just that people in the legal team who were doing a whole bunch of maybe clerical work, spending endless hours just doing filing, have moved up the value chain. And the quality of work that in-house lawyers therefore do now has improved. And as a result of which, I believe that the quality of people who are now taking on in-house legal jobs has significantly gone up from the time when we started our legal careers about 25, 26 years ago, when in-house jobs were almost seen as a second rung you know, if, you know, if you did not do litigation or if you did not get into a law firm is when you took on an in-house job, which is no longer the case. It's actually something that people are now, you know, aspiring for. And that's probably because these technology solutions have ensured that the quality of work that comes to the in-house lawyer is significantly higher. With that, uh, you know, Rekha, if you don't mind, I'll come back to you. 
uh, on your specific experience with uh, Lex Solutions Compliance Management Solution Comris. I know you've been using the tool now for close to two years. Uh, how has Comris benefited you? Uh, generally, of course, but also more specifically during these last uh, five, six months, uh, this yeah. completely strange period that we all kind of are still groping with. Again, coming to the same point, uh, uh, QB had moved from the you know, uh, initial practice of taking the checklist, uh, which was a manual form of compliance more than a decade back. But uh, a decade back, technology had its own uh, uh, issues associated with it. We were not able to get appropriate dashboard reportings and uh, we were not able to you know, get real-time regulatory updates uh, updated into the checklist. So we were looking for another product which could replace our uh, existing system. And uh, QB's operations, if you see, it is across India in 19 locations. So uh, that also had a role to play because it is not one single checklist that I can use across all the locations. So uh, it had a massive work of uh, uh, review and uh, uh, what to say, reporting which, had, which was involved in it. And uh, Comrisk gave us all what was not there in the earlier system that we were using. We, were, we are now able to get uh, very, uh, very, what to say, very, very uh, analytical dashboard reports. Uh, we are able to get it uh, quickly. We are also able to you know, get all the regulatory updates very quickly. And uh, coming to the last six months, uh, we, are, we are a very small team of only four of us in the legal department to manage this entire thing. So, and uh, we are also very new to remote working. So being a manufacturing company, uh, remote working it was something that we never thought of. But uh, Lexplosion helped us to get into this remote working uh, situation very, very seamlessly because the connect with the users was always there, irrespective of whether we were working out of office or from home. So that, uh, that comfort we got from the product because, and uh, what we specifically did is uh, we used this time also to reach across to the users who, who initially for the months of March and April, their operative responsibilities was a bit down owing to the lockdown situation. So we used this time to reach out to them to understand how, how they have understood Comris how comfortable they are. And we are also thankful to the Congress team because they also supported us on these things. So they also were you know, part of all our feedback sessions that we had with the users. We have about close to 200 users in the system who are using Congress. So we used the sessions uh, in the last three, four months to improve the effectiveness of uh, this, the implementation of Congress at a whole. And I should say the uh, specific COVID-related regulatory updates, which we got even by the mobile app, that was really very useful. Now, I'm not, it's not only as useful for me as an administrator of the entire system, but also for the user, because irrespective of where he or she is, they can continue to confirm compliances on, on the respective issues from wherever they are situated. One. The second thing that I would say is it also helped during these times, access to information is very, very important because that is very important for making critical decisions during these times. So that, that access was facilitated by Congress. Thank you so much. And uh, I, will, I will move to the other key Congress user. Uh, uh, Ms. Bhaskar, I have a question for you and the entire Hadal team. Through this entire period of uh, you know, uh, the, the lockdown when we have had, you know, very, very, uh, you know, uh, important clients who have struggled. Hanon managed to almost continuously keep to 100% usage. That's 100% tasks were completed. And, and, and act, that's actually true for QME as well. What, how did you motivate so many users, again, working from home, manufacturing sector? What, what went into the whole process? Because for people who don't understand how compliance management happens, there are actually people and users across departments, across different types of backgrounds at the factory level, at the, you know, at the secretarial level, all sorts of people. How do you manage it? I mean, I'm, I'm curious as somebody who, who's trying to drive that across, you know, 100 plus organizations. I'm really curious. How do you manage to do that? See, how effectively we use Commerce team and Commerce tool as well in the very difficult times. The people got displaced 
in various locations. That was a lockdown. Both import, export, everything was stranded. It was completely stopped. Several consignments on roads without reaching the destination, without re reaching our plant, etc. So one is the anxiety of the developments which is happening. That is the spread which is happening, which is very, very new animal to this entire world. So that is one side of the story. The other side of the story, lot of announcements were coming up from the government side, Ministry of Home Affairs, and clearance of consignments from Port Dock. This is not, uh, that is, uh, additional charges, interest charges can be waived, etc. There are a lot of relaxations on the filing of tax returns, video conferencing under the Companies Act. So in all the statutes, including labor laws, environmental laws across, and also state related announcements also keep coming. Right. So at some point of time, really we got a little bit, what I should say, with the challenging times, and we are keep getting mailers and uh, uh, sleepless nights from the overseas and uh, headquarters as well. Mm. So what's happening, what's happening, uh, your customer is asking whether you could deliver. Overseas customer, they are simply literally threatening us whether you could ex ship your export consignment or we will cancel it. But in this difficult times actually, one from Comrisk, we got everything on a plate up because we have to search from each of the portal, from each of the app, because information is keep coming in the technology world from different locations and different places and different app, etc. But Congress put everything on a platter. If I could see today, uh, in the past uh, five months, 1,900 and odd is put over there, which is something amazing. Wherever I have planned, I can just uh, switch off the button, I can get the information. And COVID-19, that uh, package, what is presented in the Congress tool is very, 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 very handy. And it has saved a lot of our time and everybody has made use of it. And more importantly, though in Congress team also scattered around and work from home, they supported us a lot. They never said no to anything. None of the team members said no, not possible kind of a thing. Many of the time we got a very, very timely support and what is possible, what not possible, et cetera. So that really helped the entire team to focus on some other business priorities as well to make that smooth running uh, than even the other locations of the other countries of our own company. That is one thing which was really appreciated the way we were working. So again, it is thanks to the tool, thanks to the technology. Thank Thanks you. to the team as well. Thank you. Uh, if, if I can come to you, Anirban, uh, if this one aspect of legal work, which has completely turned on its head in the last six months is litigation, from being almost entirely restricted to the physical world, it's almost entirely now in the virtual world. You know, uh, I don't think most of us uh, I mean, in this, in this group are, uh, you know, from a period when this was unthinkable, that people will be sitting in front of their computers and appearing before uh, judges in the Supreme Court uh, was really beyond our wildest imagination, even when, when we started our legal careers. So in this period, uh, CK Builder Group took a major decision to you know, invest in a litigation management tool and that happens to be Comlit. I just wanted to know what went into the decision-making process and also how has it benefit, benefited the group uh, over the last six months when so much of the, of the litigation management piece moved from the physical world to the virtual world? Well, um, this decision or the journey towards this decision in Ranil was not triggered by COVID. This, this decision was anyway there, but the, the, uh, the speed of decision making certainly got enhanced with COVID being triggered. So the process of, and the challenges were, as I heard other, other panelists say, but challenges were real and they were, there was a concern and there was a need to uh, bring to surface and bring on record uh, electronically all of those litigations at one place in under one tool and have a visibility using different ways and intelligence that the tool may provide so that 
uh, so that we can get a clear visibility about where we stand vis-a-vis -vis the potential claims or maybe where we stand vis-a-vis -vis the potential claims that we may have made to third parties as much as third parties may have sought from us. But with this COVID coming in, uh, the fact that this is not only a thing good to have, but something that we must have. And there is no two ways about it. It is something which has gone down very clearly across the ecosystem. I think, uh, I think so that process of decision making has speeded up and, um, and it has really benefited uh, in a sense that when we looked at COVID kind of tool that I was talking to my peers and my uh, colleagues in CK Birla Group law, legal team, they were also mentioning that you know, this kind of customization, which is as much possible, probably would, may, would not have been possible had it been any other tool and the kind of support that they got. And so, you know, Indranil, in these kind of issues, there is always a risk of over-promise and under-delivery. And then that's something which I saw is not there in this case, in, in this particular tool. And that's really a big comfort because uh, these kind of uh, risks are uh, creating a uh, very bad taste. So we didn't have that. And, and that's the real reason why uh, there is a heightened interest and heightened need in, in view of the COVID that we should have, uh, have a digitized ecosystem so far as the litigations are concerned. In fact, not litigations, contracting, and certainly compliances. Compliances have this has already covered a lot of the uh, journey in a sense that if you look at litigations, contracting, and transactions as three separate pillars, I would say uh, litigations, compliances, and, uh, uh, and then transactions. I think compliances piece has anyway been uh, uh, heavily digitized uh, in the past, but certainly litigations are far more complex. Um, uh, so so, so that, that's where we are. Thank you. Thank you. Nitin, I remember a year ago, uh, or a little more than a year ago, you reposed tremendous faith by becoming one of the first uh, clients of our contract management solution. So while by that time we probably had a fairly decent uh, track record in some of the other solutions, in contracts it was a new uh, new area and you, and you reposed faith in us. You, uh, you stood by us and you helped us deploy contract in, in, in uh, Beckton Dickinson and we're of course uh, uh, very, very thankful to you for that. But, uh, but I just wanted to ask you a, a what if question. What if you had not chosen a contract management tool then? around six to eight months from then uh, COVID came. What do you think would have been different had you not chosen uh, to go and deploy a contract tool? It, it happened to be ours, but you know, even if it wasn't, what if you had not chosen and what, you, what if you had continued with your existing journey? How would, it have, how would, it, would have COVID impacted uh, your lives in that case? So it's a very simple answer. Life would have been a tad difficult than what it is right now. It's not the simplest times to live. Um, uh, challenges are unique every day. No two days are similar. Um, had the platform not been there, probably I wouldn't have had a repository where I could go click and retrieve my um, documents. That's number one. One big change that would have happened if I wasn't using a platform at this point of time was that I would have actually gone and demanded technology. I wouldn't have had my CTO to say, hey, listen, we are looking at an international solution. Let us give us another six months. I would have said that, no, if this isn't an eye opener, then probably there nothing will be an eye opener that we need technology even for the law group. Because historically, if you see um, technology, lawyers have not been the bestest of the friends, right? Because we've been a little slow as an industry also to really adapt to technology. Uh, there are a few pockets which are very advanced and then there are a few pockets which are completely happy doing the old ways. Again, right or wrong, I'm not debating that at all. Uh, and that, that gets me to a very interesting uh, logic, right? Uh, what you and Anirvan were talking earlier. Look at the numbers. 100 days, more than 15,000 matters, more than 50,000 lawyers who represented before the Supreme Court. I mean, you could not have had a better opportunity to explain that, hey, hey, listen, if there is anyone who's not seen technology, are the judges who are sitting there at the Supreme Court because their age, their experience precedes probably all four of us sitting in this room as well. And if they were open for technology, we better start thinking about how technology will start improving our lives, right? And I again go back to the same question. And again, some of this was um, borrowed because I'm, I, I love technology and I've 
myself been thinking that where do i go from here next right as a council the pool of unmet needs is so huge where do i really see the next opportunity for a law group to be super successful and the only question that i ask myself is is the present the future as well because the present is where the need of technology is humongous and that's where it will be for the next 10 years to come as well you know that black swan moment that no one really envisaged ever in life here we are as lawyers we've been i mean you 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 put a lawyer on an excel sheet and see how uh, how quickly he fumble to see hey what the shortcuts are and if you put him on words he kind of immediately do 10 different things right things will change and optimistic and very hopeful that technology will seep in in much greater ways solutions will have to be very different tailor made uh, one size fit all will not work and therefore um platforms have to be flexible enough to and intelligent enough to accommodate the need of an organization rather than probably giving them what the platform has to offer thank you nitin and that that perfectly segues into the next part of what i wanted to ask and, and i'll i'll start again with rika on this this entire period and and we obviously still living through it uh, opens up new thoughts new avenues new challenges so as somebody who is you know who's leading a a large manufacturing setup from a legal perspective what are the next few things that you want people like us to be focusing on what is what is your need from the explosion or organizations such as ours what do the legal tech world do now to satisfy your needs itrul to answer your question what we did as a part of our risk management process is to evaluate what are the various legal risks that the company poses especially post the, during the covid and post the covid era and one of the uh, top most risk that is coming out is because the remote working situation is still continuing uh, is is how effectively are we going to monitor the compliances across the company what the second is how effectively are, are we going to manage the contract management uh, as well as litigation management i know that you have all the three products available in uh, lexplosion but as rightly mr nithin uh, put it what we want is something which is which does not create a disruption in the you know operating manner of the company but which can be customized with analytical uh, tools you know especially the you know ai part of it right which, you know if that is embedded into all these tools that makes a life lot more easier for us and you no know, with the, as i said we are always a team of a, a small resources team so it will always help us if you no know, we have our hands uh, you know on something else rather than uh, uh, tied down with those uh, integrities of you no know, to think and do what we have been doing all these years that's that yeah that, that, that we take that as feedback and absolutely you're, you're spot on we've already started doing some work and I'll, i'll talk about it a little bit but uh, before that i want to hear the others as well so mr baskar uh, what what is your view on where should legal technology go from here as as one of the uh, senior most people in the legal tech uh, adopt adoption space where do you want us to go from here yeah as reka has rightly mentioned it's a evolving thing which comes up now with new new challenges and of course it is blended with new opportunities as well so under the new normal kind of working environment so people started working from home so a uh, plenty of challenges is already come so let us be a little more proactive on what are all the challenges from the legal side which may emerge in the sense there are some faceless assessments are coming up uh, faceless hearings are coming up across all statutes and everywhere it is a video conferencing kind of a thing which is coming up everywhere mm-hmm. so how to demonstrate the factual position in the digital mode under the faceless kind of a proceedings mm-hmm. that is one thing which comes to my mind we can be little more better in making it as a product or a module or this is something very very new to us how in reality this is expected to happen because this is it to emerge we are talking much on this but we cannot rule out that this is going to happen customs started talking about the faceless assessment 
how we exactly because today already in the interface we are facing plenty of issues on the classifications dutyability exemptions and so on and so forth but under the faceless scenario if the query is raised how technically this needs to be demonstrated without any interface or in the under a faceless um, uh, proceeding scenario that is one which one thing which comes to my mind in addition to that if you make little more sector specific right everything may not be applicable or relevant to every industry mm -hmm. for example service industry it it is kind of an industry or some process industry so if we can make it little more sector specifics okay. on certain areas where we can put some position papers in the form of a database with a more experts kind of a thing that will bring out a lot of energy sharing uh, sorry knowledge sharing kind of a thing and probably new thoughts will come up new ideas will come up and this will I mean, certainly we can make some lot of differences that's what comes to my mind that's a fantastic idea a knowledge sharing platform between industry specific uh, you know people would be a great idea we, we will definitely explore that uh, anirban uh, you, you've been exploring uh, legal tech for quite some time uh, what's your thought where do you want us to go from here yes there's a there's a journey that there's no going back and it's only going forward and there are many areas in which uh, it can improve and now where i see is the intelligence of most of these machines uh, uh, leave a lot to be desired so when i say intelligence uh, there is one part is to that th these tools are basically repositories of the data and information which have been collected in the ecosystem of the organization but what intelligence does these tools have to throw back to me that this is where the red flag looks like and this is where the previous instances you have handled in this this manner so that's very true mostly on the contracting side because uh, many times the contracts are written on customers papers and all these are no two contract are the same but we know that we have a risk appetite that we don't go beyond this the limitation of liability for example or or we don't sign a contract with a governing law of a jurisdiction in which we are not comfortable so do this do these tools help me evaluate that and raise a flag when and, and these are not always very difficult some of these are difficult because some of these are very legalese language and tools may not be in a position to easily pick up uh, as we say using an ocr or something but when we get more technology specific discussions we have realized that and i'll put it i mean put it short in in sub some in summary is that the ais and the mls probably will have to uh, have to be more mature for us to use it these as an output to make decisions which i i think is is a long way to go and, and so that will be really helpful thank you anirban and, and that's that's valuable feedback we are you know all of us in the technology space are very keen on introducing ai ml nlp in, in as many different ways as possible uh, early days as you rightly pointed out but we are starting to make some progress uh, our technology team and us we are we are looking at use cases trying to see where all it fits in and let's see how things uh, uh, shape up over the next few you know months and years actually uh, nitin uh, uh, before we end Uh, you are probably the youngest and the uh, most savvy amongst us in technology so uh, your your views on on uh, what next from us and what you want from us would be i'm sure very a lot of interest to all of us uh, you know this is the reason i i usually don't shave my beard and i took that risk today and i fell exactly for that in the knee uh, but yes what what is it i expect um, at least as a legal counsel the expectation is that the life the platform has to make my life simpler how does it make my life simpler does a repository creation makes my life simpler absolutely yes does an analysis makes my life simpler absolutely yes but there are different aspects that probably a general counsel's daily lives include now for example i'm looking at a conflict of an interest at the same time right i'm looking at an investigation i'm looking at some distribution or a channel related issue how does the technology help me do that and because from a platform owner standpoint you have the gold you have the diamonds in terms of data with you right how do i really exploit that to be able to benefit from that whole um, data set of the gold that you guys have with you that's one 
And I think very, very important is that if you really ask me what gives me sleepless nights today is we are talking so much about digital. Look at the last 45 minutes we spent talking about digital and I'm sure across India, multiple uh, conversations are happening on this side. Um, but look at the fact that I still have 43 of information technology out of the data privacy at law is still not passed, right? So where does the data gets protected is my biggest concern. Uh, how do I even probably go and look at the significance or the importance or, or, or the firewall that a sort of a partner like you is giving me? Where do I really, uh, how do I bank upon that? And that's the biggest challenge that I face when I were to explain this to my principal sitting in US that, okay, I have a local partner here working with me, but do you have a data privacy law? Technically not, because it's not only, when I say data privacy, I'm not only talking about individual data or a personally identifiable information or whatever, because now we also have the, some you know rules out for public consumption and the knowledge about non-public or non-personal information, right? Where does that all culminate into and pertain or actually reflects the protection that I need for my data? That's one big piece which I think uh, needs a big resolution. And uh, as an organization involved in um, working uh, in the data side, and really, uh, you should really look at um, resolve, not resolving, but advocating some strong thoughts there as well, because that is also the need of VR that you guys should do. And uh, yeah, as I said, uh, I mean, I, I love this quote that I read somewhere that, you know, present is the future. So we are feeling the need of technology now and that's going to be the future. It's only that how easy for someone like you can make the adoption better for us is what the real task is. Otherwise, technology adoption is the given in um, CA, right? Or AC, right? After COVID and before COVID uh, terminology, which is fine. So in the after covid world technology uh, you you can't you won't be able to live without that even lad lawyers absolutely no so uh, thank you nitin and and uh, I, i'm going to steal that quote and, and use it over and over again uh, we will uh, have to you know take all the feedback that we received from all four of you and 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 there is a lot of work that we now need to do this has been a very very valuable session for us uh, we know what the roadmap is for us as an organization to satisfy large organizations like yours. I'm sure everybody in the audience who has listened to all of you uh, would have gained extremely rich knowledge on what to do with legal technology, how to make choices, what kind of benefits can be drawn out of it. And I'm hopeful that you know uh, we will have many more such conversations in the in the months and years to come. Uh, thank you, Rekha. Thank you, Mr. Bhaskaran. Thank you, Anirban. Thank you, Nitin. Thank you all for a wonderful session. I really appreciate the time that you, uh, you know, spared for this. And we hope that you will also have some time to answer any questions that the audience might have. Thank you very much.